everyone. Welcome to the Student World Talks. My name is Lean, and today I will be the host for this episode. Thank you so much, guys, for joining. I can already see there are a lot of you waiting here, which makes me really excited and happy to help you guys accomplish your goals and dreams about studying abroad. So if this is your first time joining us um, at the Student World Talks, don't worry. I will tell you guys what it is all about. But if you guys joined us before, welcome again. And thank you for tuning in again, because this makes us really happy. Um, but for, who, for those of you who, um, who haven't seen any of our episodes before, I will tell you guys just a short summary of what is this, this is all about. So the Student World Talks is focused entirely on helping you guys study abroad, on giving you information about anything you need, whether it was about destinations, programs, university, and each each week we have a different guest. Sometimes it's a university representative and sometimes we have international students who join us here to tell you about their experience and help you do the same and study abroad. So if you guys um, enjoy this kind of content, if you want to study abroad, so this is the right place for you to get all the information you need. If you guys enjoy it, please like this video and also subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can always get, get updates um, about all the other videos and lives that we have on YouTube. And before introducing this specific episode today, which is a very special and amazing episode that you guys will love because it's talking about a really nice destination that you guys love. Before doing that, I want to get to know you guys better by asking you, where are you joining us from? So as I said, my name is Lean. I was also once an international student and now I'm currently in Canada, but I want to get to know more about you. So please tell me where you are watching us from, just so we can be more engaged and make this more um, casual because this is supposed to be like that. This is for you guys to enjoy it and have fun while also getting information that you need. So um, I can already see here some comments. I can see I am Angel from Peru um, and I see Karim from Morocco. Hello. I see Josh from Nigeria and I also see from Armenia. Uh, thank you guys for sharing. I really like um, reading all the comments and just getting to know more about your countries. Uh, I see here Afroj from uh, Bangladesh and July from Colombia, and I also see from uh, Mexico and from Canada and from Jamaica. Thank you guys for sharing. Just like how you're sharing your countries and you're talking, um, you're typing on the comments, I want you guys to do that throughout the whole live so that you can get um, your questions asked, um, ask all your questions in the comments and let us know what you need to know about studying abroad so that we can help you. So today, finally, it's time to tell you guys what today's episode is all about. Today is a great opportunity for you to meet this amazing Canadian institution, Canador College. So to tell you more about this institution, um, they have a high graduate employability rate and excellent quality of education. They also have more than 80 full-time programs that you can choose from. They have something for everyone. And also they have an extensive financial program um, for students with approximately 1.7 million in scholarships and bursary being awarded annually. So if you want to know more details about this amazing institution and you want to know more about how to apply, let's um, please get, keep watching and let's explore more um, details about this institution by watching the video together. Everyone who's been here gets it. There's something different about this place and the people here. We're not just resilient. We're making things happen. We're resourceful and entrepreneurial. We're from Canada, after all. This is who we are and how we teach our students. We are a community of neighbors, friends, family, and we do everything to help each other succeed. We're in North Bay, right in the middle of Canada. And there's nowhere else we'd rather be. We're finding new ways to solve big problems. 
we're moving Hollywood further north. Healthcare into the future. And propelling aviation and aerospace to new heights. We lead disruption. We look to the future, but never forget our roots. Our size inspires big thinking and dreaming. Being from Canada means you approach the world a little differently. With enthusiasm, with bravery, without apology. It doesn't matter where you come from. You fit here. Wherever you choose to make your mark in the world, you will always be from here. You will always be from Canada. That was great. I'm personally excited to know more about Canada College, and I really hope you guys are excited as well. So it's finally time to introduce Sonia today from Canada College. Hi, Sonia. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Lean. Thank you for inviting us. Yeah. So um, how do you feel being here and seeing all the students from all around the world? Um, I was actually a bit apprehensive in the beginning, but the moment I have seen students from like Nigeria and Jordan and Bangladesh, I think um, it is going to be a good experience. And I'm glad that uh, so many students across the world have joined. And that speaks uh, about the hard work of your team. And I really appreciate it. Amazing. Thank you so much. So, uh, Sonia, I just want to start by giving you the opportunity for you to introduce yourself by telling you, telling us more about yourself and what do you do for Canada or College? Thank you uh, for giving that opportunity. My name is Sonia Tucker, as Lean has already mentioned. Uh, I joined Canada in the year 2015 and uh, I started um, as a recruiter for South Asia region. So basically, I counsel students, I meet parents, I look into their queries, uh, and I actually apprise them about uh, the programs at Canada, the USPs of Canada, and it's been uh, seven plus years, and it's been a great journey and a good learning experience interacting with students. So now I also look into a couple of Southeast Asian countries and also the MENA region, which is Middle East and North Africa. And um, so far, it's been a, a wonderful experience. And uh, the reason I am still in this job is because I love interacting with students. That's great. Then you are in the perfect place. So guys, as you heard, Sonia is an expert here. She can help you um, with anything you need to know about um, this college. So please keep your questions coming um, and ask whatever you want to know. Um, so so first, I want to ask you, uh, Sonia, because um, colleges and universities can mean a different things in different countries. So can you just explain to the students what are the differences between a university and a college? A very good question to start from actually i've received queries from so many students they ask i am looking for admission in your university and i have to, i have to actually correct them that we are a college so unlike many other countries where colleges are actually affiliated to universities where there's a big universities and their colleges under the university in canada university and colleges are standalone educational institutions and colleges have the right to offer their own programs under the credentials which have been approved by the provincial government. So the difference is that universities are usually very huge, uh, whether in terms of number of students or in the number of programs they offer in terms of infrastructure and also in terms of tuition fees also. However, Colleges are more towards job-oriented, skill-based programs. And if I talk about Canada, um, and if I talk specifically about Ontario, as Canada College is one of the 24 colleges in Ontario. They were set up in the 1960s when there was um, a, a feel of 
the jobs not being uh, you know filled by the population so they were looking for people who can immediately join the jobs after graduating and university programs are like four year programs and more research based whereas when you go into a college you do a two year diploma or you do a one year graduate certificate they are more job oriented skill based experiential learning programs that help you Interesting. Thank you so much for clearing up, up that for the students. Um, and so we already watched a video telling us a bit about Canada College, but can you tell us a bit more about it and maybe mention some of the unique qualities of Canada College? Sure. So as you were already as you were already mentioning in your introduction that we offer 80 plus full time programs. So there's a program for almost every uh, student who is looking for a program in different fields. Uh, we have about 12 different schools. So if I talk about uh, different campuses as well, so we have, uh, we have our main campus in the city of North Bay and that campus is amongst different campus divided into three different campus so we have aviation campus that caters to aviation programs like aircraft maintenance and uh, it's a beautiful campus um i am not undermining the studies at any other place but the kind of practical uh, exposure students get there when you see an airplane and helicopter on the campus you would imagine um, how much of practical exposure you're going to get and then we have the commerce court uh, campus which offers trades and technology programs and the college drive campus that offers all of the programs we also have a campus in the town of paris sound which is two hours drive uh, south of north bay and then we also have study locations in Toronto. So there are a lot of campuses and each campus has different set of programs that are offered. Um, do you want me to mention about the different programs, Lane, here uh, at this question only? Um, well, the next question was going actually to be um, what are the areas uh, of study that you already mentioned are 12. So yes, sure, you can go ahead and mention the 12 areas of study. Okay. Of okay so we have as i said a separate campus on aviation so we have programs like uh, aircraft maintenance avionics maintenance helicopter flight training that covers the aviation campus and then we have school of management we offer a lot of business and management programs for example programs like business accounting construction project management project management it so a whole lot of bouquet of programs under the school we also have School of Environmental Studies and then School of Health Sciences and Wellness with programs like practical nursing and dental hygiene, uh, occupational therapist. Why I'm specifically mentioning these programs is that they're high demand programs and there are many institutions in Canada that would offer these programs, but they're not offered to international students because obviously the seats are very less and they're reserved for domestics. However, at Canada, we offer these programs to international students as well. So how, uh, but we have a very stringent um, eligibility criteria and we uh, expect good profiles uh, to apply for these programs. We also have a school of uh, biotechnology. We have school of sports and recreation with programs like strength and sports conditioning, recreation. We have done a lot of investment in uh, our media uh, section and we have a school of uh, media design and their programs like uh, digital cinematography, uh, graphic design and acting for stage and screen. So there, there are a whole lot of programs to choose from. And if you go to the website, uh, you will see all those programs you can read in detail. However, um, this is a session uh, where we can't provide you individual program details, but yes, a lot of programs to choose from. That's amazing. Um, there are a lot of opportunities for you guys. So um, if you have any uh, program specific questions, keep asking and also check the website, just like Sonia said, to um, see them all in details. Um, and so a lot of the students here are familiar with the um, terms bachelor's degrees and uh, maybe master's, but um, but I think uh, Canada has other terms that um, they offer. What type of accreditation, uh, accreditations uh, do you offer at Canada other okay, than a bachelor's degree? 
That's again a very interesting question. Um, so students uh, usually um, ask about, I want to do a, a degree program. And some students ask, I want to do a diploma program. So it's very essential to understand the difference. And it, also, it is also essential to understand which educational institutions offer these programs. So um, historically, degrees are offered by universities. However, now colleges also offer uh, degree programs, but there are few in numbers. So if we talk about Canador College, uh, we offer programs which are diplomas. So we call it, uh, there are of two year duration. And then we also have advanced diplomas and they are three year duration. We also have certificates programs which are of one year duration. And then we also have graduate certificate programs, which are actually the postgraduate programs, which again are a one year duration. However, we also have two degree programs, which are four year programs, as you're already aware that the degree programs in Canada are four year programs. So we also have two degree programs. One is bachelors of science in nursing. And we also have re uh, last year launched a program in advanced manufacturing technology management. That's again a four year degree program. So it's important for you to understand that when you do a degree program, you invest more time and money. And as we had mentioned during the differentiation between the university and college, that university programs have more duration. Similarly, when you do diplomas, it's of lesser duration and you also pay less tuition, but the focus is to make you job ready. That's really interesting to know. Um, so as you heard, guys, you can also choose um, other options just like um, diploma certificate, advanced diploma, and not only a bachelor's degree. And this would cost you less and also take less time from you. So, so this is a great opportunity. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so the next question is, what is a dual credit program? OK. Um, so uh, there are uh, there are students in Canada who are studying in high school. So those students who are yet to complete their grade eleventh and grade twelfth, which is um, OSSD. So they have the opportunity to do a program at a college, and Canada College offers dual degree programs. What uh, what these programs do is they provide you the credits for your high school diploma. And also you get that credit if you pursue that program at the college. So the two credits, the, why it is called dual is because you get those credits if you pursue that program at the college and you also get those credits in your high school diploma. So we offer a few uh, of such programs um, to actually enable high school students to enrich their skills and also to facilitate them to start their college education. So a few of the programs, for example, would be a graphic design uh, dual credit program. Uh, there would be a program in plumbing techniques and electrical techniques. So there is a dual degree program in health and wellness also. So depending upon what the student is looking for, there's a program available. Great, thank you for that. So we have a question here asking about um, a program, uh, asking if you have any health related programs at Canada or College. Um, we do have a school of health, uh, science and wellness, but I, I want to be sure whether the student is asking for an undergraduate program or a postgraduate program. If the student is inquiring about an undergrad program that is diploma or advanced diploma, we have programs like practical nursing, which is a two year diploma. We have a three year advanced diploma in dental hygiene. We also have a program in respiratory therapy, which is a three year advanced diploma. We have occupational therapist, and then we have social service worker, mental health and addiction worker. We have personal support worker. So these are all at undergrad level, which I mean diploma, advanced diploma and certificates. When we talk about postgraduate level, we also have a postgraduate program, which in um, Canada, they are called as graduate certificates. So we have a program in healthcare administration, which is a one year program. We also have a very interesting program and a high demand program, which is international nursing license preparation, which is again a one year postgrad program. 
and uh, it's a very specialized program and gets filled up really quickly. Um, we only take students who are registered nurses in their home countries for this program. So these are some of the programs we have. Awesome. Thank you for giving those details. Guys, if you have more questions about programs, please keep them uh, coming in the comments. Um, so uh, speaking more about programs, um, what is the English for Academic Purposes program? Okay, so um, we have we know that we are aware the students are coming from different countries where English might not be the official language or English might not be the first language. So we have a program to help students uh, get more comfortable with English. So English for academic purposes actually prepares the students in all the sections, which is reading, writing, speaking. Um, and it kind of helps the students to prepare and prepare for the academic program. Uh, at Canada, we have levels in English language uh, uh, program. So it's not just English for academic purposes. We also have English as a second language and both have level one and level two. So depending upon your previous um, English proficiency exam results, majority of the students opt for IELTS. There are different IELTS uh, scores associated with these levels. So English for academic uh, purposes is a one year program. That is, it has two semesters. So we have level one and two in that. Similarly, there is ESL. We have level one and two in that. Um, I would not want to go into at what IELTS level, which uh, level of EAP will go into that. But yes, if you feel that you need to be prepared for the English language before going into the academic program, we kind of help students transition uh, from um, one program to another by upgrading their English skills. This is a great um, opportunity for a lot of international students, for sure. So thank you so much for explaining that. Um, so, so speaking more about programs and classes and the way that uh, colleges teach, uh, usually teach, um, what is the method of learning at Canada specifically? Is it more, um, I know you mentioned that it is, it is practical, but maybe give the students like how practical it is and what are some of the things that students do to learn? I think that's a very important question because uh, I don't think there is any room for theoretical learning left because there's so many resources available to students um, uh, through internet only. They can learn a lot and hence it's very essential that what they learn in classroom is fully practical. So what we call at Canada is experiential learning. Um, so uh, what is experiential learning is that when you're pursuing the program at Canada, you are kind of given exposure to the industry. Let me give you an example. Uh, we have a program in culinary management and we have a restaurant in Canada, which is 100 elements. So culinary management students get a hands-on experience by working at that restaurant. Similarly, um, any student who is pursuing recreation therapy or a program like strength and sports conditioning, they have 300 hours of applied work experience as part of the program. Because what you learn in the classroom, if you're not going to apply that um, by knowing what, what is happening at a workplace, you will not get that practical exposure. Similarly, as I had previously mentioned that um, our campuses have a lot of laboratories and hands-on experience. So if a student is doing a program in aviation, you're not doing it theoretically on books, but you have live airplanes and helicopter on the campus to look and work at the machinery. So um, every program has some or the other aspect of practical exposure or work. Um, another example, practical nursing will have a mandatory clinical internship. Uh, a program like environmental management will have a field trip. So these are some of the examples by which you get the practical exposure. This is all really um, sounds very fun, like really fun ways to learn. Um, so thanks a lot for mentioning those examples. Um, and we also know that Canada College has a high employability rate, um, which is um, 87% to 95%. So um, what do you do to prepare students to find jobs? 
uh, again, uh, different programs have different employability rate, but the percentages you mentioned are correct. Uh, first of all, it's a very student specific question also. Uh, some students um, uh, are actually quite smart and they learn um, a lot of hustle themselves. Uh, but at Canada, what we actually do is uh, we have a career uh, development center. So when we understand that international students bring a lot of diversity and experience to the classrooms, that anyway becomes a lot of good learning experience to all the students to know the perspectives from different cultures, societies, and countries. Uh, not only that expands the horizon, but also that makes you more sensitive also. But what that does is um, that you are better able and you become more confident in dealing with different people. So what we do at Career Development Center to start with when a student join uh, Canada is that we do workshops on building your resume the Canadian way. Uh, that is done by the college. We also kind of help them find part-time jobs. We actually prepare them for the full-time jobs as well. Uh, we have also recently tied up with a platform called Devant, wherein students have their own accounts and they keep doing workshops, uh, improve your interviewing skills, improve your resume, how to get a job in marketing, how to get a job in finance, management jobs. So these by these ways, we actually prepare the students to get jobs. We kind of encourage them to network a lot. We kind of encourage them to be active on LinkedIn. Um, so I think these are some of the ways uh, where we actually encourage students uh, to be fully prepared uh, for their jobs. Also, another difference uh, that uh, uh, it makes to students' lives at Canada is that there is a lot of personalized experience. We have small classrooms size uh, uh, I know there are institutions where, the, where there'll be thousands of students we also have a lot of students but we make sure that students have a personalized experience and when you have that personalized experience you have the faculty you have peer tutoring groups and that kind of prepares you for the interviews that sounds like a very supportive um, community at Canada College. So thank you so much for um, touching up on that. Um, and so you did uh, talk a bit about this, but just so can students uh, can know more about it. So can students, um, can international students work while studying in Canada? And if they can, what kind of jobs do they usually get here? Mm -hmm. Interesting. So. Uh when students come to Canada, they get a study permit uh, at the airport. And the, that study permit is their permit to work in Canada. OK, it is clearly mentioned on that study permit. Um, so students can work up to 20 hours per week. So while they're studying, they work for 20 hours per week. And that is called as a part time job. And once they complete their program, they apply for their uh, work permit, and then that is called a full-time job. Um, these are the two differences that students need to understand. Um, as far as part-time jobs are concerned, it's not necessary that if you are doing a health-related program, you will be getting a job in health-related field only. Um, I am kind of uh, apprising students of that because sometimes you end up doing any part-time job just to make sure that you kind of make up for your expenses. However, we always encourage students to make sure that study is your first priority rather than a part-time job. That is an option to you. It's not mandatory. When we come to full-time jobs, I can give you some examples of students who have graduated from Canada and what kind of jobs they're doing. For example, a student, I don't know if I should take the names, for example, a student who completed the mechanical engineering program is working as an HVAC specialist in Scarborough, okay? Uh, a student who has done culinary management, I know, is working at a Fairmont Hotel in Quebec as a chef. Um, there are examples of students who have done aircraft maintenance and they're working as a, 
uh, aircraft maintenance engineer at a company okay so uh, a student who has done business management is working at a manager at tim hortons so you do get jobs in your own uh, field uh, when you graduate from the program and one of the great examples i know a student who has done project management it is working with um, is working in north bay as a analyst with ministry of it so a lot of options students have and um, it totally depends on how um, you know active you are and uh, have you successfully completed the program how serious are you in studies and how serious are you in networking yeah that's great thank you so much for talking about all these details about the employment as uh, students um, and just like you mentioned it's really beneficial beneficial as, as it helps with the expenses. And also it's good to get that experience to know more about the Canadian culture and lifestyle. So uh, thank you for that. And you did talk a bit about the work permit as well, which is after graduation. Um, so can you tell the students more about that? How long can they have this work permit for? And who is eligible to get that? Mm -hmm. So um, when I said that you will be doing your full time job, you are eligible to do a full time job when you apply for a post study work permit. And if you look at the CIC website, it's called the post study work permit program and a student who has successfully completed the program. So it's very essential that you complete the program. Then only you can apply for it. It is also essential that you have not violated the norms of 20 hours per week. Um, and then you can apply for this post-study uh, post work permit. Um, in regards to duration of this permit, um, it depends. So for example, if you've done a two-year program, you can get up to three years of work permit, okay? When we say up to, it depends on the officer analyzing your file. If you've done a one-year program, you will get a one-year work permit. So it depends on the duration of your study. Great. Thank you so much for that. So we already talked um, a lot about the programs and the employment, um, but now the students would really love to know more about the campus and the social environment of Canada or College. Um, so can you maybe describe the feeling of being there on campus? It is usually is it usually busy or is it more um, quiet, like just like the size of the classes and just any details that you can give to the students about the campuses? Mm -hmm. um, I think um, Canada is a very uh, close community, very friendly community. So I would not say that you will find a quiet campus. But yes, it also depends on the timing of the year. For example, this is like uh, the time of the year because fall intake has the maximum number of programs that are offered and a lot of students uh, coming in, whether it's domestics or international. So, the campus is all, um, you know, uh, full and bubbly and cheerful. But then there are also intakes like Jan or probably May, wherein there are less programs uh, which are offered. So that will kind of uh, lead to less number of students on campus. Whether it's more students or less students on campus, uh, there's some of the other activity. There's some of the hustle that is going on the campus, which is very useful for the students. So um, I think um, if you go to Career uh, Development Center, you will find students there. If you will go to, uh, you know, we provide services and assisting students with mental health services, you will find uh, students there. There are students in the Panthers Club, in library, around the campus. So I just want to highlight that uh, the campus is not just the building. It's a 650 acres huge campus with a lot of activities to do. So there are trekking trails within the campus. OK, so we are located in a forest like area away from the urban life to help you connect with the nature. So there are a lot of things to do on campus only. Wow, that was a great detail. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, and also, you did mention a bit, uh, you did talk a bit about the student services, but um, maybe you can give the students more details about the student services at Canada College, like what services uh, are, are there for them? 
Mm -hmm. um, after having worked in this industry for years, I understand uh, the fear and the anxiety with which the students uh, come to the campus uh, because leaving your home country and your family is not easy to settle in a country that you know nothing about. And hence, we understand that and therefore we provide a lot of services to students so that their transition to Canada and to Canada is a bit helpful and not as stressful as they might have imagined. So we provide services like uh, we have a pre-departure session. So before you depart from your home country, we kind of do a session with the students and tell them the do's and the don'ts. Then we have the orientation session when they come to Canada, Canada, we do an orientation session with the students and provide them every detail about the campus. We tell them about all the policies, safety, uh, even there is a session on sexual awareness. So there are a lot of things that students are informed about. Then we also provide transportation. So if you're looking for transportation from the Jack Garland Airport, we do that for the students. We provide accommodation. We have an, um, we have an on-campus accommodation. These are some of the services to help you settle. But once you have settled, we, have pro we also have other services, like we have an international student guide. It gives you a lot of information about North Bay as a city, the weather, where you should buy things from, depending upon which country you are and what you need there are details about that for example we know that south asian students would need spices so we we will inform you where you can get spices in north bay uh, similarly uh, there are um, you know guard me insurance services as i mentioned before there is a platform to help you with the workshops on resume which is the devant platform this is again a service we have a which we call under the career development center we have services of peer uh, tutoring we have services of mental health uh, services if you want to discuss something if you're feeling stressed you can go and discuss there's a therapy dog on campus so a lot of uh, such services are offered to help students feel at home this all sounds amazing. Thank you so much for um, mentioning that. Um, can you also tell the students more about uh, North Bay? Uh, just like how far is it from Toronto and um, what are some places that the students must see there in North Bay? Mm -hmm. So uh, North Bay uh, is about uh, three hours drive north of Toronto. And we are also three, three and a half hour drive from the capital of Canada, which is Ottawa. So it kind of forms a triangle, Ottawa, North Bay, and uh, Toronto are equidistant. Um, as far as North Bay as a city is concerned, um, it is a very uh, beautiful, scenic, close to nature kind of uh, city. And a lot of activities are around culture and nature only. So North Bay has two beautiful lakes, Nipissing and Trout Lake. And a lot of activities are done around the year on these lakes. Uh, there's also um, trekking trails, uh, there's museums, um, there are a lot of things to enjoy like you get in a normal uh, metro city like Toronto, but there's also a, a, you know, a, a ship which is chief commander on Lake Nipissing and uh, you can uh, do a you know, day or an evening uh, ride on that, it's beautiful, I've done that, you feel very close uh, uh, to the waters and the sky at the same time and that. Um, a lot of activities, for example, um, everybody is aware that Canada is cold. There, There's always this question from parents, how cold is that? And uh, every city has a different temperature. It's not the same. So um, I just want to kind of not intimidate the students, but you know that the temperatures will go down to minus 20 or minus 30. And then when the lakes are completely frozen, then you see people doing uh, ice fishing. So fishing is a great activity at uh, North Bay and ice fishing is like, it's like a mesmerizing activity to me. I don't know how others feel it because when you dug that hole in their eyes, it's interesting. So some of, very good activities are there. It sounds like a really beautiful city there and a lot of activities and things to see. So thank you for um, telling the students all about that. Um, and also, can, can you give the students an idea about the costs of living there? 
as an international student. Um, an advantage to student about uh, living um, in North Bay specifically. So I can, so in Canada, no city is the same in terms of cost because some are very metro cities. Some uh, would be a little far from the metro city. So it depends like in around the world, uh, there are different costs in different cities. The same applies to Canada. Here I'll be uh, mentioning more about North Bay because we're discussing about Canada or college. So North Bay as a city will cost you less than what it will cost you in Toronto, which is the most known city in uh, Ontario and its capital. So whether it's the living cost, whether it's the tuition cost, uh, whether it's the cost related to your shopping or transportation, uh, it's less. Uh, if, if I have to talk in numbers, if you look at the accommodation, any college or university accommodation in Toronto, it will cost you higher. Even outside accommodation is very costly in uh, Toronto. In North Bay, the Canada College accommodation is 600 Canadian dollars, and it's a beautiful, safe, secure um, campus accommodation, which gives you a lot of privacy with all the utilities included in the cost. Uh, you actually get a bus pass, which actually takes care of your transportation costs in North Bay. If you look at the tuition, it is very competitive and slightly less than other institutions. And so you save on your tuition cost also. And um, we do provide financial assistance to students as well in terms of scholarships also. So yes, cost of living reduces. And if you're looking for a good quality education, at a lesser cost and also by spending less on your accommodation and other expenses, North Bay is an ideal city to be in because the more you live in a metro city, the more it will cost you. That's really interesting. Um, thank you for uh, talking about that. And um, you also said that it is not far from Toronto. So this is also great for the students. If they still love to live in a big, uh, visit a bigger city, they can still do that while also attending Canada or college. Um, so now a lot of the students, um, I'm sure a lot of them are really interested in uh, um, knowing about the admission process after hearing about all these beautiful things about the college. Um, so first, um, what are the English language proficiency requirements uh, to attend a Canada college? Okay, um, so that's, um, that's a question that is difficult to kind of answer uh, because there are different requirements for different regions and also across different programs. But on the whole, I can uh, mention that we accept different uh, English proficiency examinations, like we accept IELTS, academic, we do not accept general IELTS, we accept PTE, which is Pearson Test for English. We also accept uh, TOEFL, IPT. We also accept CAEL. Uh, we also accept Duolingo. So there are a lot of, uh, you know, English proficiency examinations we uh, accept at Canada. There are different requirements for students who are coming from SDS countries, that is study direct stream countries like India, China, Philippines, Morocco, Pakistan, etc. The requirement stands at six overall with no band less than six in each band for IELTS. And uh, there are programs in health sciences and aviation where the minimum requirement is 6.5 overall in IELTS. However, for other countries, the IELTS requirement is not each individual band six or students with 5.5 in individual bands can also apply. However, we also have students coming in from English speaking countries where English is the official language, for example, Mauritius, for example, some of the African countries like Nigeria, there the English examination is exempted. Awesome. Thank you for um, mentioning that. And um, what does the admission process for international students look like? Like where can they apply and how and what? Um, yeah, like like just the general um, process of this admission. So admission process is uh, very simplified at Canada. Um, earlier, there was no application fees, but now there is an application fees of 100 Canadian dollars. We accept all our applications through Ontario College application system, which is called as OCAS. 
uh, any student willing to apply to Canada simply has to go to OCAS and look for Canada College and the open programs and they can apply. While applying, this is when you're applying uh, to us directly. This process is also applicable if you're using services of any counselor or agency. The applications are done through OCAS. Um, the process or the documents which we need uh, when you are applying to Canada or college is that you have to fill your application form, which is there on OCAS. You have to provide all your academic documents starting from your high school, uh, graduation, post-graduation, whatever diploma that you have done, uh, it has to be uh, attached in your application. If you have any work experience, it has to be there. And most importantly, your passport and English language examination should be there in the application. The good thing is that if you apply and your all documents are complete, the application screening happens quickly. However, if the documents are missing, that's when the spiral of emails and your application takes a backstage. So it is suggested that very simple passport IELTS and all academic documents is what we need in your application package. Perfect. Thank you for mentioning that. And I just want to remind the students to keep their questions coming because um, we still have a few um, a few minutes left, but um, we would love to answer their questions. So guys, please keep commenting your questions about anything that you need to know about Canada College. Uh, so Sonia, you did mention that the tuition is, um, um, is more uh, affordable. Uh, can you just give the students a, a tuition fee average at, tu at Canada College? Um, if we have 80 plus full-time programs, but on an average, if I tell you about our tuition, it costs around 15,000 Canadian dollars. Having said that, this is the average fees. However, if you look at uh, some programs which are very specialized, the tuition is higher, which is not just with Canada, but across other institutions also. For example, aviation programs will cost you more than the average fees that I've told. Even the health programs will cost you more than 15,000. But on an average, the programs are very um, affordable and the tuition that we have kept is quite competitive, uh, around 15,000. Thank you. And when can students apply? Um, so we have three intakes. One is the winter intake, which is Jan, spring intake, which is which starts in May, and we have fall intake, which starts in September every year. Um, the visa timelines have increased since COVID for different countries around the world, and that has actually resulted in institutions opening their intakes a lot of months in advance, because we have seen that in some of the countries, the visas are taking like uh, four months, a lot of weeks. So, uh, for example, um, earlier we would open our intakes, let's say five months before the start. For example, if it's a January intake, we would open that in September the previous year. However, now we have started opening the intakes quite early. Hence, you must, if you're looking for an institution, you must keep a track on their website when are they opening their intakes because I still get queries from students now that they're looking for January intake, which is Jan 2023. And however, we are already closed for the intake. Okay, so your question, uh, lean of when they should apply, they should apply as early as possible looking at the website. Definitely, and we can also um, put the website on the comments so you guys can now see and check out all the specific details um, about each program. And um, finally, a lot of students are really always curious about scholarships and awards when it comes to um, studying abroad. So what are the scholarship opportunities for um, international students applying at Canada or college? Mm -hmm. um, a few years ago, we used to give scholarship on the basis of your academics or on the basis of your English proficiency. But now we have kind of streamlined the scholarship uh, uh, scholarships that we are giving. We call them as geographical incentives and uh, or there's another name which is diversity incentive award. So we have six levels in that. Um, we are different regions 
uh, wherein we have identified the regions across the world on the basis of our diversity needs from where we are looking students from. So sometimes students, you know, get really excited to know, okay, so I'm getting scholarship just because I'm from Africa. Yes, you're getting scholarship just because you're from Africa. So you get a 2000 Canadian dollar scholarship, which is mentioned on your offer letter, because that's the diversity incentive that Canada College is giving you, because we're looking for more students from that region. So there are six levels and uh, up to 3000 Canadian dollar scholarship that you get, which is a geographical incentive mentioned on your LOA. So I have seen students here from Bangladesh. There are students who said they're from Nigeria. So uh, a Bangladesh student would get a thousand Canadian dollar. A student uh, from Philippines would get a 2500 Canadian dollar scholarship. So these are some of the scholarships that we give before you enter Canada. Once you are studying at Canada, you will receive updates on the scholarships that we announce and they're competitive. Students have to apply for it. And if you're able to pass the eligibility, you get scholarship when you're studying at Canada. So these are the two types of scholarships available. Interesting, thank you. And there's a question from a student here asking if there's a scholarship that is fully funded. Um, as I said that uh, our programs are quite competitive with uh, affordable and less uh, tuition costs, there's not a program yet which is fully funded. It's a part of your fees uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, given to you in your account in terms of scholarship, which is the entry level scholarship I've just mentioned. So uh, not a fully funded program. Okay, thank you. And um, there's another question from a student asking for May 2023 intake, when will they open the application? As for the latest update that I have, we are opening for May 2023 intake next month, which is November 2022. Okay, thank you. So guys, if you have um, more questions, please keep them coming because um, we are reaching the end of this live episode. Um, Sonia, thank you so much for all the details, information and the help that you offer to the students today. Um, so guys, if you didn't get a chance to ask your questions today here on the comments, you can still get in touch through this email that is provided here on screen um, because um, maybe some of you couldn't think of a question now but you have something later you can definitely still get in touch uh, at this email that is provided on screen so sonia thank you once again for joining and giving the students all this uh, very um, amazing and informative answers uh, would you like to, to tell the students any advice um, about studying abroad or studying at canada college specifically Mm -hmm. um, I would just want to mention to students that uh, the more uh, you're going to research, the more information you will get, but more it will get confusing for you. So it is also very essential that you also take help of an expert to guide you on what program is best for you. What are you actually looking for? You should also make up your mind on which city or which uh, province you want to go to Canada. And that will kind of help you uh, funnel your choices because there is lots of information available and it sometimes get confusing and might make you uh, stressful. So I would just request you to make the best decision for yourself. And if you're actually looking to study abroad, now is the right time to start. Please don't keep thinking because seats re get really full quickly. Uh, if you want to start, start early. That's the suggestion I want to make. And um, I hope you make the best suggestion and Canada College is ready to provide all the support to you if at all you provide. Uh, kind of are looking for Canada College. Uh, there's an email ID that is reflecting on the screen. Feel free to write to that uh, email ID and we will look into your queries. I also want to thank you, Lean, for organizing this and for making us getting in touch with students from different regions across the world. Uh, thank you so much for that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sonia, for this amazing advice and for being here today. And we hope to see you soon again at the Student World Talks. Yes, Thank hope you. to see you soon. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.
Guys, I want to thank you once again for joining us today at the Student World Talks. I hope you guys got all of your questions answered. And um, just as Sonia said, always start early. And if you really want to study abroad, um, this is a great place to be in. So please um, like this video if you enjoyed. And if you did not enjoy, you can always get in touch with us and tell us why and how we can uh, do better the next time. If you want to know more about the future events and future live episodes, um, you can also follow us on our Instagram page, The Student World, where we always post about anything related to destinations and universities so you can accomplish your goals. Thank you again for joining the Student World Talks and I hope to see you soon again here. Thank you, goodbye.